All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get it set up so that we can actually get some interactions. Now remember, um, as I talked in class, that anything that moves or any data that you want to be synced across the different players needs to have um, a way for um, that information to get back, sent back to the data store. And then what happens is every client that joins the, the game, they'll get a full copy of the data store, uh, which includes all those transformations, all that data change. And as those things are updated throughout the game, um, updates are sent back to each client, allowing them to get uh, a real-time update of what's happening in the scene. So if we take a look here, we'll go take a look at this orange ball. We're going to want to be able to pick up that ball. We can take a look at the inspector. It's already set up, ready to go uh, for Steam VR. So if I went and played this in VR, uh, I would be able to actually interact with this object. But it's not going to cascade or mirror into the other players who are joining the scene until we get it connected through the norm core system. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is add in uh, a new component to this ball. And we're going to look for real-time transform. And when we add that in, it also adds this real-time view component. So if we take a look here under the advanced settings, uh, there's a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, by default, owned by creating client is checked off. So what that means is that uh, whatever person basically is the first in the game uh, will be considered the creating client. Uh, and with this checked off, it means that they own it, meaning that no other player can actually interact with that and take ownership. So for this case, we're going to want to actually have this turned off. Um, and then that way, with this unchecked, when we want to allow different players to pick up the ball, they'll be able to do that. Because right now, with this checked off like that, only the player that's the first player, who is considered the creating client, will actually be able to interact with the ball. So we're going to go ahead and deselect that. And then under the real-time transform, we can see by default uh, position, rotation, and scale are checked off. And usually you're going to want to leave those in place. All right, so we've adjusted um, some of the settings in here under, under the real-time view. Now what we need to do is we need to basically, when we pick up this ball, we want to claim ownership of the ball so that it will prevent other people from being able to um, move this and it will allow us to pass that transform information uh, back into the data store. So we're going to go ahead and create a new script. And I'm just going to call this real-time transform, or sorry, real-time throwable. And what we're going to do is, with the throwable script, as we can see, we've got the um, on pickup. So we're going to create a script and write a method that basically, when the ball is picked up, it's going to request ownership of the ball um, so that that information can then be tracked. So let's go ahead and open up that script here. So we're going to be needing to add a couple of libraries at the top here, one for um, the norm core system, and then one for, uh, later on, we'll be using one for the Valve VR interaction system. So let's go ahead and add those right now. All right. Um, so we're going to create a couple of variables. We want to basically create a reference to the real-time transform and the real-time view. So we're going to go ahead and go, um, these are private, because these only need to be accessible from inside this script. And we'll just go private, real-time, transform, and let's call it re RT transform. And we'll do the same thing with the view, um, real-time view, RT view. And we're going to create another variable that we're, we're going to be using a little bit later on here. But we'll just get that set up while we're in, in this spot. Uh, this one will be public because we're going to need to access this from another script uh, later on. We'll call this public. It'll be of type integer. Um, the ownership ID or the ownership is an integer. So when no one owns a particular object in norm core, it has a value of negative 1. Um, if it's owned by a player, it has a value of their avatar ID. So anywhere from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So we'll go ahead and call this one ownership. 
and we'll set it just to a value of negative 1 for now. So what we need to do inside our start method is create the actual reference to these components. So we're going to go ahead and go RT transform equals game object dot get component and we want real time oops real time transform and we'll do the same thing with the view all right we don't need the update uh, because we're going to have a method that we're going to call when the object is picked up. Um, and so we want to get rid of anything that we don't really need. So start, update, fixed update, or awake. Those are always automatically called at some point. Um, and if we don't need those methods, we want to get rid of those. Let's go ahead and create a new method. Because we want this one to be accessible from the inspector, we need to create it um, as a public method. And I'm just going to call this grabbed. So basically what we're going to do is when the method is called, we're going to request the ownership um, of this transform that's on the ball here or whatever object we have the script attached to. So go, go ahead and go real time transform dot uh, request ownership. And this is a method, so we need to end it with the round brackets. We're also just going to do the same thing with the view. And we'll be using this later on, but let's just get this set up. We're going to set the value of ownership to the um, owner ID of the real-time transform. And what's going on here? Oh, it's not a method, sorry. It's a variable, so we just get rid of that. Okay, so that's ready. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And we're going to go ahead on the throwable script. We're going to create a new event under on pickup. And we could just drag the orange ball because that's the object that has a script on it onto there. And under functions, we'll see we've got the real time throwable, which we named our script. And there is our method we called uh, we want to call called grabbed. So the way uh, norm core works is. If you pick now that we pick up this object, it's going to request ownership. It's got a kinetic um, rigid body on it, so it's going to have the the movement. Um, I also have with the I believe in what the template I provided under yeah we've, I've created a material called bouncy, uh, which gives it a bit of a bounce to it. So the way norm core works is the the owner is is requested when the ball object is picked up. I'm going to throw the ball. It's going to have some kinetic animation, so it bounces and rolls and moving. It's going to still be owned by me until the ball stops moving, um, and then it's going to release uh, the ownership, and it will be unowned. Uh, if I was to release the ownership as soon as I let go of the ball, uh, the animation or the, the transformation uh, through the kinetic um, physics doesn't actually get sent back to the data store, so we, we need to allow the ownership to be maintained by whoever had thrown the object and then once it stops moving comes to a complete stop that ownership is cleared so right now if we were to go and give this a shot in VR or even in our 2D fallback we should be able to see um, this working now I'll show you a little technique that will make your development time a lot quicker and not having to always go into VR or move it to another computer so what we're going to do is actually build this um, and then run it as a build and run it in the engine and it will simulate two players. One thing you want to make sure, uh, oh, let's just hit save. Oops, I think I put up the wrong scene. Let's go back here. Uh, there we go. All right, uh, one thing you want to make sure is under your build settings, under player settings, just make sure that the resolution is set to windowed because that way you'll be able to see, that won't be full screen as a build, and you'll be able to see um, the, the window of the game as well as the editor. So that's good. So let's go ahead and close that, and let's build and run this. So once the game's uh, started in the, in the standalone, I'll, I'll play it in the editor and we'll be able to see 
both players. And what we'll be able to do is see if the ball's transformation position is being updated across both clients here. So we'll go ahead and move this out of the way. And I'm going to collapse this here. And I'm going to hit play. And I'll position so I can see the ball. In a position so I can see the ball and I'm just going to move uh, so with a 2d fallback you can rotate around with your right mouse button and scrolling and then just moving around with your WASD so I'm going to get close to the ball and I should if I pick it up I can see now in that standalone player these are two separate clients and the ball is the transformation is being updated across both clients so that's all that we'll cover for this video in the next video I'll take a little bit more of a deeper dive into ownership because right now uh, if we were to leave it like this there's going to be some conflict uh, between Normcore and SteamVR uh, which I'll talk about in the next video.